Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to the destruction of various stars, that very often results in extremely powerful emissions we refer to as gamma ray bursts. But in this case we're going to be focusing on a relatively recent study that, for the first time ever, seems to have discovered a completely new way for stars to be somehow destroyed. Something we've never seen before anywhere, and something that nobody could even predict up until this recent observation. And so in this video let's actually discuss a little bit more about this very unusual event, explaining exactly what this event was, and more importantly, connecting all of this together and essentially trying to figure out what all of this means. But I guess first, the study behind this is as always in the description below. And the main point of the study was to try to figure out somewhat unusual properties for a gamma ray burst that was detected back in 2019. And when it comes to gamma ray bursts, most models today believe that it's something that looks like this. It's essentially a collapse of a relatively massive star that starts within the star with two very powerful rays bursting from two directions as the star goes supernova. And the resulting rays are so powerful that as they pierce through various clouds around the star, they essentially start producing various frequencies. But normally these events don't last very long. This is something that might last a couple of seconds or even less, Although, as you might have learned from one of the previous videos in the description below, some of these gamma ray bursts, especially more unusual ones, seem to actually last much longer, sometimes even several minutes. But these are extremely rare and very often involve something very extreme on the inside. Nevertheless, most of the gamma ray bursts so far have been basically below 2 seconds. And back in 2017, by studying neutron stars, we also discovered that the collision of neutron stars also results in a gamma ray burst, but in this case extremely short one. And because these are basically some of the most powerful explosions in the entire universe, trying to figure out what exactly created them and doing so by observing those events in various frequencies in the last years has become a priority for a lot of different scientists. Mostly because it would solve a lot of mysteries and help us understand the universe a little bit better. But apart from more extreme examples that we've discussed in previous videos, some of these bursts look relatively simple and somewhat usual, but sometimes turn out to be something very very special. And that's pretty much what happened in this case as well. And here, the team behind the study wanted to use various observatories, including the Nordic Optical Telescope, the Hubble Space Telescope, and the International Gemini Observatory, to try to figure out what happened in this case, because it was just a little bit unusual. A little bit longer than it should be. According to the analysis here, it was obviously not the longest GRB, but it was sort of pushing the limits. But in order to try to figure out what happened here, the scientists first had to locate this particular event, by discovering the original galaxy. And so by using the images from the Hubble Space Telescope, they were able to discover the original galaxy at a distance of about 3 billion light years away from planet Earth. And this galaxy was somewhat quiet, not particularly active, barely visible, and technically is not an expected location for these very powerful events. These types of powerful supernova are extremely unlikely to happen in a galaxy that's somewhat old and somewhat quiet. You would expect this from a much younger, much more active galaxy, or a galaxy that's undergoing an active collision. And more intriguingly, this particular event seems to have happened extremely close to the center. A further analysis established that it was actually about 100 light years away from the heart of the galaxy, or practically on the outskirts of the central supermassive black hole. And that was very strange. Extremely strange. Almost impossible to explain with a typical supernova. And it was only after follow-up observations that they also realized that this was unlikely to be a supernova or a massive star collapsing. There was no sign of any kind of supernova emissions or any kind of supernova remnants. And so if not a collapse of a star and if not a supernova, then what? Well, the only explanation that currently makes sense involves a catastrophic collision between two compact stars. But unlike neutron stars that would usually orbit around one another for quite a while before colliding and before creating a powerful gamma ray burst, in this case it was most likely an almost head-on collision. An event so powerful that we barely understand it at all, and the event that most likely annihilated both stars, created the gamma ray burst observed from planet Earth, but possibly also left behind some kind of a black hole or maybe a neutron star. As a matter of fact, it's actually unknown what was left behind. But assuming that this is correct, it basically presents us with yet another way for stars to completely destroy themselves meeting their final demise. Or I guess technically the fourth official way in which stars can disappear or transform into something else. Just as a quick reminder, the three other typical ways for stars to do this 
involve either going through the planetary nebula stage, releasing the outer shell and leaving the white dwarf behind, this is what's going to happen to our sun, a supernova event, where the star collapses releasing a huge amount of energy, leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole, this is what's going to happen to Betelgeuse, or collision of various stellar remnants, such as neutron stars or sometimes white dwarfs, which very often results in an explosion as well, and in the end produces some kind of a black hole. And so it looks like now we have four options, with the fourth option being a direct collision at relatively high velocities. But the question is of course, why do the scientists believe so, and how can such an event even happen? Well, the results here indicate that this must have happened in an extremely dense environment very close to the central black hole. Here are the actual images from Sagittarius A star vicinity, and you can see there are a lot of different stars orbiting around this invisible, extremely compact point in the middle. And based on various observations, today the scientists believe that there are a lot of different very dense objects in this region, including of course neutron stars, including black holes, but also some of the more unusual objects such as G objects or S objects we've discussed in videos in the description. Either way though, a lot of these objects are close enough to one another to potentially sometimes interact. And a lot of previous explanations for a large amount of black hole collision and neutron star collision detections we've seen so far involve these central regions. Quite a lot of scientists today believe that many of these black hole collisions very likely happen in these dense regions, otherwise we would not be seeing that many so frequently. And it looks like sometimes in some of these galaxies, some stars can accidentally collide because their orbits eventually cross. And these central regions for a lot of these ancient galaxies are actually believed to contain quite a huge number of these stars that might have been here for millions and billions of years. But if this assumption is correct, and if this is indeed what happened here, this might also imply that many of these longer GRBs, especially previously unexplained longer GRBs, potentially share the same origin. Many of them might have actually been a result of a collision of two stars, but because of the distances involved, in many cases it will be difficult to establish if there's anything left behind. But in this case, because this is an ancient galaxy and because it's not very active, observing the central region here was a lot easier than before. And so technically this is the first observed event that involves stellar collision from what seems to be a very crowded environment inside the central region of a galaxy. But if we can also detect some kind of a gravitational wave connected to this event, that could definitively help scientific teams to answer a lot of the questions. At the moment, no such gravitational event was detected so far, and only future similar events happening in various galaxies could maybe help us determine if this is what's going on. At the moment, this is definitely a very exciting explanation and a very exciting detection, which of course also means that star collisions, and especially powerful star collisions, are probably a lot more frequent than we ever believed and do result in some of the most powerful explosions in the entire universe. Although surprisingly, no supernova, just a gamma ray burst. But we'll probably need a lot more evidence from a lot of future studies to determine all of this and to actually find out how frequent all of this is. Until those future studies or until future analysis or possibly someone disproving this, well that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.